Alright, in this small video, I'm going to show you how to do an invariance test during your CFA. You're going to want to do an invariance test in your CFA if you're conducting a multigroup moderation test on a structural model. Now, you need to do this before you create composites out of factor scores during your CFA. Because what you're doing during an invariance test is seeing if your factor structure is actually equivalent across different values of a multigroup moderator. So for example, if we have a categorical variable called gender, we want to see if the factor structure is the same for men as it is for women. For example, if, um, let's say the observed variable CR4 loads on F4 for men and for women, or does it actually load better on LC, uh, factor 5? So. We need to test to see if this factor structure is equivalent for men and for women before we can create composites. Because if we create composites out of a, uh, a non-equivalent, a non-invariant CFA, then the factor scores we create are actually, or, I mean the, the composite variables we create are actually meaningless. Uh, they're muddy. They don't mean the same thing for men and for women. So our resultant SEM model is flawed. So here's how you do it. We're going to test for configural and metric invariance. And the way you do that is by creating two groups. Group number one, we're going to call these men. Group number two, we're going to call these women. And then we're going to set, select the data. For men, we've got this one. Grouping variable is going to be gender. Doo -doo -doo. There's gender in here somewhere. And the value is going to be 1, just 76 men. Go find the data for women. Should be the same data set. Here we are. And let it load. Might take a sec. Grouping variable, gender. Grouping value for women is 2. Hit OK. All right. Now we just need to make sure modification indices are selected in the output. Good, because we'll be looking at model fit. And run it, and hope it runs. Good, it ran. All right. So we're going to go look at model fit. Look at this. We've got pretty decent fit. Um, the idea behind configural invariance is when you run the model with two groups estimated freely, meaning you haven't constrained anything, then if you achieve good model fit, then they are probably roughly equivalent groups with regards to the factor structure. So we look at this, looks like, yep, we've got pretty good fit according to this measure. If you look at the CFI, yep, that's pretty good. PCFI, wow, that's actually really good. Um, P close, awesome. And RMCA, also awesome. So we've got pretty good model fit, which means we have configural invariance the uh, two groups are equivalent. But just to make sure, we're going to do a chi-squared difference test. So close this and look at your chi-squared degrees of freedom. Put them into the chi-squared difference tester. So 185.4 and 118. And now let's go constrain some things. Let's see. So to constrain, first thing, this is a little bit different from how you do it in the structural model. The first thing you need to do is remove the constraints that are already present. So I would just double click that line, get rid of that constraint, this line, this line, this line, and place the constraint actually in the latent factor. Now we're ready to constrain our paths. Name parameters. You're going to name the regression weights. Hit OK. Now you see they are named the same thing for men and for women, which constrains them to be equal in Amos. So they are all constrained. We are not estimating freely, as it were. Go ahead and run this again. And we're going to put this new chi-square degrees of freedom in our chi-square difference tester. So that's 198.3 and 131. And let me expand this just so you can see everything. And yes, we do have two groups we're testing. Make sure that is at two if you're only testing two groups. Looks like we are invariant because this p-value is not significant. That's great. So that means we have met metric invariance 
um, tests. We're, we're good, no problem. These two groups are invariant across or with regards to this factor structure. So we can go ahead and create those composite variables from factor scores. But make sure you remove these groups before you do that and also remove these constraints. Just go with your regular CFA um, before creating composite variables. And that's it.